go to Common Craft Tutorial, and I'm going to be working on some penciled comic pages. And to begin with, I'm going to demonstrate how I stretch watercolor pages. Can you? I'll do it. Do one. I was going to pause it. You need a remote. I know. I was just thinking about that. So to stretch watercolor paper, you're going to need a stretcher board, and this is just inexpensive corrugated plastic that's been cut down to be the right size for a 10 inch by 14 inch sheet of watercolor paper. You're going to need some blue low tack masking tape. I like the one and a half inch tape made by 3M. I've tried other blue tapes in the past. I find that this one works the best. You're going to want a selection of clips, nine large bulldog clips, and about three large binder clips. And it also helps to have a spray bottle of water, although that's not necessary. You will need some paper towels, a mop brush, and a cup of clean water. So we're going to start by flipping the page over and saturating the back with water. And this is a new spray bottle, so I have to get it activated. Or it says it will never spray. That's fine. Spraying isn't necessary. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So you're gonna dip your mop brush into the water and apply a liberal amount to the back of your watercolor paper. And I do my comic pages on Mont Vol 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is a cellulose based watercolor paper, which doesn't make it good for traditional watercolors, but it is able to hold the sort of detail I want for watercolor. So once you've got the back saturated, you're going to take your paper towel roll and you're pretty much just going to roll it across the back to soak up the extra water. Then you're going to flip it over and I actually have some non-photo blue that escaped from the front. So I want to wipe that off, flip it over, position it on your gator board and saturate the front. And the first layer of saturation you're going to do is just to activate that non-photo blue from the inkjet printer so we can pick that up again because we don't want that. And that's a water-based ink, so adding water will reactivate the ink. soak that up and then we're going to saturate it again and this time it's intended to help stretch the paper. And if you don't own any spray bottles, a quick trip to your Walmart or Dollar Tree will supply with supply you with all the water bottles you really need. You don't need to buy the ones that are labeled for like crafts because it doesn't matter. All right, so my page is saturated and I know it's hard for you guys to see that, so you have to take my word for it. With some fresh paper towel, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this off. And you don't need it to be bone dry, you just need it to be not sopping wet. Now, we're gonna take that blue painter's tape and we're going to pull off a length. And you don't want it to be super tacky. So one of the tips I found is you stick it against your arm so those dead skin cells make it less tacky. Because if it's too tacky, it'll rip up the paper surface when you remove it. So, oh shoot, I goofed. Too distracted tonight. So if you mess up, it's really easy to remove your painter's tape, especially while the paper is still wet. What you want to do, let's do this again, because one of the important steps is actually you want to moisten the front side 
of your painter's tape. And it's important to use a crepe paper style painter's tape rather than the foam ones. The ones that are designed not to tear when you rip them off from the walls will not work for this. Line it up with your straight edge on your comic page. Squeegee off the excess water and then use those binder clips to secure the edges while it dries. And you're gonna wanna do this for all four sides. And you're going to use bulldog clips to secure the edges that are further away from the edge of the corrugated plastic. And there are other ways to stretch watercolor papers. This is just the way that really works best for how I work. Now, if you find that your page is too far on all four ends, you can use those binder clips on all four edges. And the long metal part will help hold it down. messy process so I recommend putting down a vinyl tablecloth to help protect your surface now you need to set this somewhere so it can fully dry out and on a humid night like tonight it's probably best to allow it to dry overnight guys so tonight um, I'm gonna try to get some more watercolor done it is raining so um, it is very humid outside and my pages may not actually dry so we're gonna start off with a couple of washes and um, sort of just see how that goes and I have here my paints I have here a palette with large wells, and this is just a recycled mochi ice, mochi ice cream container, so it's not anything fancy, and two cups of clean water. So I'm going to go ahead and fill one of my palettes with the water and activate some of my pigments. And since it's sort of a later afternoon scene, I'm mixing in Indian yellow with orange. And for the other page, I really want to emphasize that it is much later afternoon. So I'm going to go with a little bit of Opera Rose.
with some naphthol red. And you have to be careful with naphthol red because this particular kind goes a long way. And some fuchsia. I think it's permanent mauve. And we're going to take the brush we use to apply mops, uh, <laughs> use the mop brush we use to apply washes from the other day, and just go ahead and apply an all over wash. And then, after all of it has been covered, and there's no pooled areas of liquid, we want to prop it up. And it doesn't need to be propped up much, just a couple of inches. Ooh, clean out the brush. And time to switch over to the other color. And when doing a wash, it's really better to maybe err on the side of caution and have your wash be a little too light and reapply it than to have it be way too dark and try to work around it. All right. So that is my first wash i need to allow this to dry before i can continue so i will see you guys when these layers have fully dried which may take a while because it's kind of a damp night out there all right guys it's been a couple of hours and my washes are mostly dry they're still a little bit damp because it is so humid tonight but I'm gonna go ahead and apply another layer because the colors aren't really where I want them to be. They're not as dark as I wanted. And in the in this one, I'm adding more orange. And if you live in damp, I mean damp or humid climates like Louisiana or Florida or parts of Alabama or parts of Georgia, you it may just take you a lot longer to do watercolors than it may take your, you know, your friends in other states. Um, I don't have the drying time problems here. I mean, in in Tennessee that I do here, but Tennessee is a lot drier, and I also don't paint on damp nights in Tennessee, whereas in Louisiana there are a lot of damp nights. So these are factors you do need to take into consideration before you undertake any large format project like this. Um, for those of you who live in these sort of humid, swampy areas, alcohol markers may give you the look you want without um, the long dry times, but it is going to cost you more. All right, so I've reapplied my washes to both and I need to let these dry out before I can continue. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that happen. So once your paper is fairly dry, and like I said, tonight is a really humid night, so that is just not gonna happen. You may want 
to go ahead and knock in some preliminary shadows. Now with this purple shading, this purple wash, it's very easy for me to do that. Um, and this may not be dark enough for right now, but it's gonna tone and influence the paper, um, sort of uh, giving the other colors a little bit of a cast. And it'll also help me remember areas of shading and stay consistent. And watercolor pages are very, especially multi-panel pages like these, um, are very similar to um, single panel or single unit illustrations. Um, the real difference is you're just going to handle, you have more to paint, and you're going to handle the panels in parts. Now the way I do this is I, I work in batches. I'll color all of the skin, I'll color all of the, the floor, um, basically just trying to automate it as much as possible to save myself time down the road. I don't handle each individual panel as an illustration unless there's something very unique about that panel and what's going on in that panel that would give me reason to do that. And my regular viewers may recognize or may notice that I'm painting in a different environment. I'm actually out of town, so I've set up a temporary painting environment, and this was fairly easy to set up. There were a few things that I needed to bring, like my brushes and the paper. Um, and there were a few things that I had sent here, like gator board, because it's easier than you know trying to bring that in my carry-on bag. And then there are other things that I was able to pick up here. Um, one of the things I did pick up here was a white vinyl tablecloth. Now I wanted to go with white so that it wouldn't cast a, a color on the paper, influencing how the paper looks. Um, but another aspect was, it was very cheap, I picked it up over at Walmart. Um, some other things that I need to supply were the, the lighting in this house is very yellow, it's very warm. And that's very common in most non-artist houses. So I did need to pick up some, um, you know, bright white natural lighting because that's what I'm used to painting with at home. Um, I really do rely on that sort of lighting to be able to accurately find the colors I need. One of the plus sides though about it being as damp as it is, is that my paint stays workable for much longer than it would normally uh, be active. 
so I can do blending techniques on this inexpensive watercolor paper that I might not otherwise be able to do because it would have already set up. So I'm softening some of the shadows on the face. And I'll set that over to the side and begin knocking in some of the, the preliminary shadows here using the same purple. And this is a very time consuming process that does require a lot of patience. Um, it is not necessarily the medium for everyone. And me showing you guys how I do this doesn't mean I feel like it is the medium for everyone. That said, I am an extremely impatient person. Patient, patience has never been my virtue. Um, I'm the sort of person who always wants things to hurry up and happen. So if I can find patience in watercolor, I fully believe you can too. It's really a matter of how badly you want it and how much willpower you have. And in one of my prior uh, Intro to Comic Craft videos where I show you guys how I handle the watercolor co cover, I think I mentioned that I work on mul usually work on multiple pieces at one time. And two is definitely on the low end for me as to how many pieces I'm working on. Usually I would do four, but I didn't actually bring enough bulldog clips here um, with me to do four. And I believe I have some st in storage here, um, so I need to go and get them later on this week. If that, that is if I want to work on multiple pieces. Given how um, how humid it's been, I I'm definitely having difficulty with even two. Um, Paper has a memory, especially cellulose-based paper like what I'm using for these pages. And um, your watercolor pages will kind of, if you had trouble or encountered, encountered warping or didn't stretch your pages properly, um, your pages will revert to that state whenever you add a significant amount of water to the paper. So that's something you should keep in mind um, is that paper has a memory. And that can definitely come back to bite you in terms of warping and where the paper pools. I mean, where the, the paper, it, yeah, where the water pools. <laughs> One of the other downsides of painting while I'm out of town is I'm doing it very late in the evening. It's like 11 o'clock at night, and I've had a pretty busy day. So um, I may be a little bit fuzzy headed when giving you guys instructions. I apologize for that. Please um, make sure you read the description and check the annotation because I may, if I, when editing this video, if I find that I said anything that was in error, I will correct it there. And I think just given how damp it is, because it's, it's been raining almost all day here, I think I'm going to have to allow these pages to fully dry out overnight.
when it is as humid as it is tonight, you also want to go over and um, not only smear, uh, sort of blend out um, or soften areas of, of where you put down shadow, but you also want to pick up any areas that may have pooled. Because that can definitely be a problem later on. This page is looking very, very purple, possibly too purple. But um, I do want it to be a late afternoon page. And it's, I think it's probably very difficult for you guys to actually see. Let me. I may have to switch to the hand cam for that. So let me do that. And I'll show you my progress for tonight before we call it an evening. Before I do that, I'll prop these up so they can dry, hopefully at an angle. All right, so that's what my pages look like right now. And um, the lighting isn't quite ideal. I do have two natural light lamps in here, but neither of them are overhead. I am trying to avoid um, cast sh shadow. Now I recommend natural light lamps because it allows you to see colors as they actually appear, as they actually are, um, rather than you know yellow or warm lighting influencing what you think the colors look like. Because I've had to do a lot of corrections in the past when I painted in that sort of light. So it is definitely worth investing in some natural light lamps, if only just to check. Now, um, you can see I've already laid down preliminary, preliminary, gosh, preliminary shading. Um, and the purple stands out a lot more on the yellow tone page um, than it does on the violet tone page. But this is just shading to help remind me of areas that I want to shade more. So I'm going to allow this to dry overnight on this very damp night and I will see you guys tomorrow with some more watercolor page progress. Alright guys, so it's had time to dry overnight. Today is the third day we've been working on these paintings. And the weather is still really humid outside, still really threatening rain. Um, but I am going to uh, try and persist. Now, um, I want to go ahead while I still have this yellow-orange mix from the other day. I want to go ahead and paint in the windows. And I'm also going to be mixing the tone that I use for the skin and the walls. It's sort of a, well the walls are supposed to be like an off-white creamy color and it's the base tone for the skin as well. Hopefully though, since it's not actively raining, we might not have quite the dry time problems. So to do that, we want to start out with about a dropper full of clean water. And we also want to go ahead and activate those pigments that are used for Caucasian skin tones. And I happen to really like yellow ochre and a little bit of scarlet red. And I'll take a few minutes for those pigments to activate.
All right, so I've got that second layer of skin tone on the walls and on the skin. And something I really struggled with is I forgot to bring my good larger round. This is a 10, this is a squirrel 10 from Jerry's Artorama. This thing is literally like painting with a mop because the, the, the hair has zero resistance. So it flops over immediately, it bends over immediately. Um, and it doesn't really have much of a belly either, so it um, doesn't really do a very good job of holding um, paint. Um, you want to paint with the largest brush you can comfortably use, and unfortunately I just didn't bring a close second to that 10. And that 10 is so bad that um, I'm kind of tempted to go see if I can scrounge up a synthetic or um, just a replacement for it because it is really making it um, that combined with the humidity outside and my, my paints behaving in an unusual way, it's really making it difficult for me to paint. And I want to eliminate as many issues as I possibly can. So if replacing the brush solves some of these problems, then it's certainly worth it. Um, and with your larger brushes, the ones that don't necessarily need to, to hold a lot of detail, um, you can switch over to a synthetic. In fact, I use a synthetic this is another Jerry's Artorama brush. This is a Mimic and it's a 26. I could not afford to buy a size 26 uh, natural hair brush. That would be like $60. 60 definitely on up, probably up. This was like 24, way more affordable. I don't really need a natural hair uh, brush in this size because my paintings are this size. They're much smaller. So I invested that money instead in buying good natural hair smaller brushes. So um, that if you do smaller illustrations like comic pages, you really do want to invest the majority of your money in small detail brushes and have one or two decent larger brushes. And this number 10 is just unreasonable. That needs to be replaced. So this needs to dry. And this will take longer to dry because I put a layer of really wet paint really watered down paint on top of an already damp surface. So I need to step away for quite a long time to really allow it to dry out before I try to apply additional layers. And uh, since it is not actively raining right now, um, that is the dry time is a little bit shorter and the paper doesn't buckle as badly. And I'm mentioning this because I know a lot of my viewers are from Louisiana as well. I meet a lot of you guys at cons. Hey guys. Um, and you guys keep asking me your watercolor questions and I really want to help you and I really want to help troubleshoot these sort of problems. So while it may sound like I'm complaining, I'm acknowledging the issues that you've brought up to me and hopefully we can figure out solutions to these. But I definitely think one of my problems here with the pigments I'm using, with the weather we've got, is this this not very good brush. So um, I really may have to, that might be the solution for many of you guys is just really upgrade your brushes or uh, experiment around to find synthetics that work better for you because humidity and barometric pressure really can play a huge role in in how your watercolors handle.
So, what we're going to end up doing tomorrow is I'm going to selectively darken parts of the floor. This is a good base darkness for the floor. Now, some areas are remaining white, and I want to, I mean, remaining wet, and I want to absorb some of that uh, standing water, standing um, pigmented water, you know, just dabbing it up with a brush so that way we have sort of a more even distribution of color. Um, that is one of the problems when the humidity is super high is um, you will get areas of paper that dry faster than others so you'll get um, more concentrated colors than others because the way water and watercolors work is water flows from wet to damp so damp and paper will pull more water so um, if you've got standing water it'll all sort of go towards one place and that tends to also be the lower spots and if your paper is driving at an uneven pace it'll ripple so I mean these are compounding problems and some of them are mitigated by stretching the paper but again paper has memory the night I stretched my paper it was very humid had a lot of buckling that I couldn't really do much about wasn't able to stretch the paper as quickly as I as would be ideal that causes problems too um, so we're going to let this dry overnight before we make any more significant progress. Um, that way we're not going to have areas that are still damp but may not feel, may not look damp, may not even feel that damp, sucking color in from areas that are sopping wet. Um, as I mentioned before, that can be an issue. Um, I do have some splatter up there that I'm not happy with, so I'm going to try and get rid of it, try to cover it or uh, wipe it away if I can. Sometimes Mont Vol will let me do that, sometimes it won't, sometimes I just have to cover it. I'm having a really difficult time working uh, at the setup I, I designed for myself here. I'm going to have to continue tweaking it if I want to be able to work while I'm in bowling. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm working with. For some of you guys, this might seem like a really ideal situation, and if you're working on smaller projects, or one page at a time, it's really not bad. It's when you're working on multiples and you have multiple palettes spread out, you know, it, it quickly becomes an issue. Um, and a lot of that is my own fault, my, my own, the way I laid everything out, um, the way I have the camera set up, I didn't bring another tripod, so I have it on a box, on a mini tripod on the table. So I know you guys are having trouble seeing the things I'm doing, which is why I've been taking the time to, you know, pause the video bring the camera around and restart it so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I do have step-by-step -step watercolor tutorials on the channel that I recommend you check out if you want to learn how to watercolor, especially if you want to learn to watercolor the way I do. For right now, we're just doing basically fills, um, and those don't really require a lot of technique. They just require a lot of patience and the ability to work fairly quickly. So I'm not super concerned about that. I would like to change my camera angle when I'm doing more detail work. I also realized that I forgot my color pencils and my watercolor pencils. Those are in Nashville and I probably will need them because I'm having a lot of difficulty given the weather outside. I'm having a lot of difficulty attaining the detail I like to, to achieve. Um, I'm also having a lot of trouble controlling the water and controlling the color. Um, so I will have to do a lot of cleanup work, a lot of tightening up with uh, color pencils, watercolor pencils, and I'm debating whether I want to just get like a cheap set of Crayolas because I only really need a few colors and they don't really need to do anything that spectacular. Um, just getting maybe a cheap set of Crayolas to sort of help me out in my time of need. But you know I have a few days to think about that since the weather is kind of preventing me from painting great swaths. You know that can be a good a good problem in a way because it gives you a lot of time to think about how you want to solve your problem so you're not immediately forced into a solution. So um, I am going to pause the video and bring the camera around, show you guys what I've done. Okay, so this is my current painting setup. It's the dining room table. I'm sharing it with my mom as she repairs a clock. So that is taking up some of the table there. Um, usually I paint on the floor with everything spread around me and when I finish pages or when I finish working on a particular part of a page, I'll put it you know, sort of within reach, but not 
in my direct vicinity. Um, with a table though, I can really only work on two pages at a time. Just, I mean, because four pages would literally take up the whole table. And you guys can see my palettes are not as effectively laid out as they could be. I'm gonna have to rethink that because it's just, I'm like really reaching when I'm trying to get colors and you really don't want to be stretching that far over your papers. So if you guys can learn from my mistakes, that would be fantastic. I know many of you guys are younger, you're just starting out. So hopefully this is a good time to not start bad habits. So this is today's progress. We've applied skin tones, first layer of hair, um, the floors, the walls, started filling in some things. So um, even though progress has been kind of slow in general, I'm happy with what was done today. Let me show you guys the lighting situation here. I have two Ot lights to try and remedy the very warm lighting in here and that's another thing if you're a watercolor artist or if you're an artist who relies on being able to accurately gauge color you really need to invest in um have either switching out your your yellow home lights i know um the yellow light is better if you're like trying to go to sleep at night these white lights will actually keep you up all night that was a problem i dealt with last year um so the yellow lights are actually better for you if you you know trying to go to sleep like a normal human um the white lights are supposed to be better for seasonal affective disorder but um still kicks my butt every year despite all of the lights in my apartment being uh natural light lights um but yeah this is what i'm working with right now um and there's a, a dollar plastic tablecloth on the table and that's actually been great because I didn't realize how messy I was until I had a white tablecloth to show me all my drips. So uh, I'm glad that's there to catch a lot of my problems. That shredder box, uh, the camera has been standing in front of that shredder box, like in front of the alt light on that shredder box. So, so I need to bring a, a real tripod next time because this is on like a tiny iPhone tripod even though this is a camcorder. So yeah, this is, this is, what I am painting with for right now. Um, I think that's it for tonight. I've been doing a lot of my paintings in the painting in the evening, so um, if I'm kind of quiet, it's because I'm brain dead. Um, and I guess better quiet than having to edit a lot of not important chatter out. Anyway. That's today's progress, and that's, you know, the, the, the layout I'm working with. Like I said, if I was working on a single page at a time or smaller illustrations, this would be fine. This would be great. Um, I'm used to, like, mass producing, batch producing a lot of my paintings, uh, which requires a massive amount of space. So, you know, got to change your methods when you change your environment. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to point that right in the light. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow.
since she keeps popping in to see what I'm doing, I figured you guys might get a kick out of seeing her since I think you've seen Bowie in my other painting video when I was doing comic pages. So right now I am mixing up the color that goes on the rug, sofa, and chair in Kara's family dining living room. And it's sort of a light indigo color. So hard for me to tell until I put it down. guys can see the more the pages get blocked in the closer they look to being finished and this can be a little bit deceptive um, because it often feels like you're closer to being done than you really are those of you who watched my um, the the cover video where I was painting Naomi sitting on her porch <laughs> can testify that I said I was about finished so many times when really I wasn't of course, when you get to the point where you're adding fine details, it really does feel like it's moving faster and it feels like you've hit a turning point, particularly because you can often work nonstop. When you're still blocking in things, you're dealing with adjacent shapes that can bleed into each other. And honestly, painting in the fine details feels more like actual watercolor painting than when you're blocking in shapes, at least to me, because I mean, when I'm blocking in like this, anybody could do it. I could have somebody else, you know, come in, come and work from my reference and be able to block everything in for me. But where you can tell it's my work is how I handle the details. And it's very tempting to render uh, certain things all the way to completion, um, but you know you do need to try and work at a steady pace, filling all things in. I mean, I'm not so good about that either. I mean, I put a lot of detail into Dusty Kara's pet gecko, who she's holding up right here, and I'm still blocking in a lot. So we're still mostly in the blocking in phase, although it's quickly coming to an end. As you can see, there are increasingly fewer areas of just plain white.
today we blocked in Kara's clothing, her mother Maldina's clothing, the um, frame for the mirror. We darkened the floor. We also blocked in the sofa and the rug. So I think we're making pretty decent progress. Um, hopefully we can keep up this pace, maybe even extend this pace tomorrow. So I will see you guys then. So today I mostly just focused on shading things, deepening color, adding slight details. Tomorrow I'm going to start um, adding actual sh like uh, complementary color shading for uh, skin tone in the background. Um, you want to add that sort of those sort of glazes before you add too much detail because they can reactivate the fine details and um, make it look muddy. So you want to add those afterwards. Hey guys, it's been a few days since I was last able to work on my watercolors. I've been out of town, so they've had plenty of time to dry. Um, right now, Luling is just as damp as it was when I left, um, so I'm not super sure that dry times are going to be very reasonable. Um, if you do work in a humid climate, you are going to have to give your watercolors more time. So um, I'm definitely sympathetic to my other friends in Louisiana who are trying to learn how to watercolor. Um, the environment does set up a lot of new obstacles that um, even when I was in Georgia or in Tennessee, I just don't necessarily face. Um, and there are things you can do about that, although I'm not sure how effective those things really are because I haven't had a chance to test them yet. So my pages have had time to dry. Like I said, for a few days, because I was out of town, and before I left, I went and I picked up some colored pencils that I needed. I had forgotten to bring my big set, um, and it wouldn't have been very feasible anyway, so I pretty much just picked up the essentials I knew would work well for these pages. Some browns, some peaches, um, I also picked up some intense watercolor pencils. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with intense watercolor pencils, these are my favorite on the market. They're technically not watercolor pencils at all. Um, they're really water activated ink pencils. That means once you've added water to them, they're indelible. They'll never lift up again, which is why they're not true watercolors. And a little bit earlier, I went ahead and I reactivated the palettes I was going to need, or the colors rather, that I was going to need for um, what I have left to do. Hopefully I can get a lot of that knocked out tonight. Um, that really, again, depends on how quickly things dry. And I have, um, I know the lighting may look a little bit weird to you guys. I have three natural light lamps lit right now, um, trying to get full coverage, ideally, you would have a natural light bulb in your ceiling. Um, it's a warm yellow right um, in here, and there's not much I can do about that. Um, 
So it is a little bit hard to get as much coverage as I might like in terms of color. Like, uh, I'm sorry, light, light coverage, whatever. So I'm pretty much on the stage where I'm adding some of my final details. Previously, I uh, did the shading on the skin. Now I'm working on building up the hair. And the reason I wait to do that, especially with darker hair colors, is these are some of the colors I use for Kara and her mother's hair um, are kind of opaque and they're very prone to um, influencing the other colors around them. They're prone to spreading, they're um, prone to bleeding if any water gets near them. So I was really trying to do damage control by, um, you know, holding them off until the end. Because um, my traditional way of adding shadows to most colors doesn't really work in the hair anyway. So, you know, this was something that could wait until the end. I was hoping my other um, tripod would come in and uh, we did hold the mail here so it may be waiting for me at UPS right now but I really do need to get these pages finished and off the table because I do have other projects I need to work on before I head out so I can't really wait for those tripod that tripod any longer but what I was hoping to do with that was set it up behind me sort of like um, the setup I had for the cover uh, tutorial so that you guys could get um, a different vantage point. So now that I have that layer of hair painted, it's time for me to mix up another one of my shadow colors. Now these over here, these have dried for a few days, um, so I might be able to reactivate them, but I don't want to have to count on it. I will try though, because I mean, you know, I don't want to waste it. And I already went over you guys what goes into that. It's an indigo, a shadow violet, Payne's gray, um, usually a bit of purple to add some warmth. But the hair needs to be fully dry before I can really start applying it. And when I'm going to apply this shadow color, I'm really gonna work in sections because um, what works on one area may not be dark enough for another area. So I am going to allow the paint on the hair to dry and I'll check back in with you guys. All right guys, so the hair is finally dried, or at least it's dried enough for what I need to do. And for the blue that I used for Kara's mother's dress, I needed to mix up a special color because um, this sort of ultramarine or cerulean blue, it's actually a mixture of two different blues. Um, the pigment lifts up if you apply a color on top of it to wash away um, even if you're using a very soft brush so you really for, for me I found that by using a color that has some of it in it already it's less prone to doing that and I'm trying I don't know how successful this is gonna be but at least for right this moment I'm trying to record and paint so I'm holding the camera in my hands right now to demonstrate okay so okay there's 
that. And it was it, this is not like, you know, a primo painting job. This is me trying to get it to work. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna apply that to all over her dress and then I'm gonna see um, how that looks and if I need to mix it darker, if I need to apply another color over it, there's going to be a part where I'm gonna have to, if I want to darken her dress anymore, add any more shadows, I'm gonna have to switch over to pencil color because I don't wanna disturb the pigment too much.
All right, these pages are just about done. All that's really left is to remove them from these stretcher boards. Um, I went ahead and I added details with some color pencils. I used Prismacolors on these pages and some white Windsor Newton gouache and that helps put highlights in the eyes. It is a little bit difficult to see but it helps to put highlights on the eyes and add highlights back into the background. So I am going to let the gouache that's kind of piled up on the side dry and when that's finished I'll remove these from their boards and these pages will be finished at least for now. Okay so all that's really left is to remove the blue tape from the watercolor paper and the paper from the stretcher boards and to do that you want to pull away at a 90 degree angle because you might get some tearing and that's fine but you don't want it tearing into your page. See what I mean about some, oh, you can't see. See what I mean about some tearing? Just whatever. Okay, you let me enter here. All right, so this is how the pages look once they've been removed from their backer boards and their blue paint. Um, what was less striking when the blue was on there is this border of pink. That was the pink wash, and when you can see it against the white of the page, it stands out a lot more. So I will see you guys again soon with, um, you know, when we're doing the the borders with color pencil um, and then I'll check in with you guys for digitization and lettering. I'm Becca Hilburn. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed these tutorials. I hope it was helpful to you. As always if you have a question please let me know in the comments below. Um, if you haven't yet, please take a moment to check out my other videos in my Intro to Comic Craft series. I go over thumbnailing, I go over roughs, I go over um, painting a cover. And um, for more content like this, please check out my blog, madosoup.blogspot.com. If you're interested in helping make more content like this possible, um, there are a number of ways you can do that. You can share my videos to your social networks so your friends can also learn. Um, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content like this, or you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash for information on how to help fund more videos like this. So I will see you guys soon. I hope you have a great day. Bye!